how can vitamin C protect you from COVID-19 and spike related damage? That's going to be the topic of our today's video. My name is Dr. Nikola Rashik and let's get started. First, let me show you where I am. There's this super cool hoodoo right behind me, which is why I scrambled all the way up here. I'm about to descend down a steep slope. Hopefully there will not be wipeout consequences. <laughs> There's a it's a creek down below me. All right, so this topic was brought, brought to me by the members of the COVID-19 Q&A sessions. This is something that they were interested in. And typically what happens is, is that the scientific topics that they bring up, I research and we discuss it. And then occasionally, such as this one, this occasion, I make videos on this. So I've already made, made couple of videos on the protective roles of vitamins. So recall, I already made one on vitamin D. I made one on vitamin A. So let's continue this with vitamin C because it was very interesting stuff as well. Definitely, I was sold on it. And I've been supplementing with vitamin C already for a long time. The reason why is because, well, You'll find out. <laughs> so right off the bat, so this was a review that was given to me. So really, really, I'm just summarizing a review. And right off the bat, the authors of this review mentioned that vitamin C has been used as a potential treatment during COVID-19. And there has been some studies done on that and they summarized it and basically mentioned that vitamin C, use of vitamin C improved, improved patient outcomes in terms of fever and <laughs> also in terms of fever, the, another one was um, oxygenation uh, cell blood count and mm, inflammation and the one that that I was really interested in particularly was improvement with with uh, clotting markers so let's break it down in uh, greater detail but the take home message here is that the higher the dose of vitamin C, the better the outcomes observed, okay? So let's, let's break this down in terms of what are, how it works. And first big benefit of vitamin C is that it's an antioxidant. All right, I'm right by the creek, but this is why, this is what I wanted to show you. There's really cool features here in this canyon. And what does antioxidant mean? It means that vitamin C can capture reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species which are chemicals that are very prone in catalyzing chemical reactions and they can be dangerous because they will start disrupting systems. They basically are so reactive that they perturb proper biological functions. So Anytime you hear antioxidant, that's a good thing. That's what we want. You want those antioxidants in your diet. And vitamin C is one very powerful one. Look how crazy skinny this is. This could like fall any moment or it looks like that, right? So wild. And, uh, 
vitamin C literally can grasp it and remove it from circulation. So as a consequence, such a chemical, reactive chemical, whoo, is no longer available to do its damage. It's so steep, I'm gonna sit down and relax. <laughs> and reactive oxygen species, basically these this chemicals, they can cause cytokine storm and now that can create inflammation. As a consequence, it also means that vitamin C, in essence, is also anti-inflammatory at the same time as it is an, an antioxidant, okay? So very valuable information as well. Number two, and here is the one that I really enjoyed. Oh man, I'm so eager to go up. I'm gonna try, bear with me a little bit. It's super unfavorable terrain. And the other one is that it is antithrombotic. That's a really big one for me. I was really seduced by that. And the reason why is because I just started a series on this topic of, this is why I wanted to go up a little bit. Let's see, and you can see that little bit of a lake in a distance, that pretty blue. I started a series on clotting and how clotting might be intensified because of COVID, including potential role of spike protein in formation of ab unusual abnormal clots. So anything that's antithrombotic is of interest and I was definitely interested in that. Oh, I forgot, going back to antioxidant, there is one interesting aspect which was also mentioned in this review and that is that brain has a very high metabolic rate, it processes a lot of sugar because obviously it requires a lot of energy in order to, to do all of the work it has to do, this work, right? And as a consequence of this high metabolic rate, it produces a lot of reactive oxygen species as well. That means obviously not a good thing. And as a consequence, the way brain, apparently one of its ways that it protects itself is that it retains very high levels of vitamin C, also referred to as ascorbic acid. Okay, so I thought that was super interesting, especially since that apparently the brain also has the capacity to retain very high level of vitamin C, even during vitamin C deficiency. Okay, so I thought that was super interesting. So, as a consequence, that's one of the ways how vitamin C could be protecting the brain. But on top of that, vitamin C is already known to also be neuroprotective. So, apparently it helps in neuronal regeneration and proper function. So perhaps that might be achieved because of these antioxidant properties and potentially these antithrombotic properties. So I thought I'd mention that. Going back to the antithrombotic properties, there has been, unfortunately there's limited studies, but there has been some studies as well with COVID-19 patients. I believe there was one study which showed that indeed use of vitamin C reduce coagulopathy, which is basically this regulation of your blood system coagulation or forming proper clots in order to make sure your vasculature is intact. And it reduced the likelihood of creating microthrombi thrombi or microclots. So big winner for me. Obviously, it would be great if we had more studies on this topic, whether they'll be coming or not, we'll see, but I hope so.
for sure. Now, what's another interesting component about speaking of, of uh, antithrombotic activity of vitamin C, remember, vitamin C is actually in high doses important for proper maintenance and function of your vasculatory system, of your blood, blood system, or I should say your blood vessel system. And scurvy, the nasty disease of sailors, that was caused because of vitamin C deficiency. And the scurvy basically was loss of integrity of the vascular system of these sailors. And that was eventually fixed by vitamin C supplementation. And that's also one of the reasons where the term limey comes from, which was a derogatory term used for British sailors at some point before it was figured out that no, they were the smart ones by <laughs> incorporating vitamin C supplementation. So as a, so that, that's an interesting um, component. So that means that obviously vitamin C also protects your integrity of your vascular system. And in another study, the author summarized that they did show that vitamin C use also reduced D-dimer levels. So what are D-dimers? D-dimers are basically byproduct of elimination of clots in your body. So they inform you about your past history of how much clotting has occurred in your body. So the higher the levels of D-dimers, it means the higher the levels of clotting has occurred in the past. And it is one of the most accurate markers of progression of COVID-19 disease to the severe state, including the likelihood of dying from COVID-19. So it's, it was a very heavily used test. So this was another really interesting com component of, uh, of vitamin C and why it, it, it could be highly beneficial in the current circumstances when we obviously exposed to spike protein from potentially constant reinfections and the damage that that might cause to these such viral infections. And the final aspect, which I, I thought was a little bit weaker because I could not verify the references properly, but the authors were mentioning that viral proteins, and I believe this might be envelope protein involved in this, can dysregulate hemoglobin, proper function of hemoglobin. And as a consequence, it could, because of that, it could reduce the level of oxygen available in the body, leading to hypoxia, meaning too low amounts of oxygen. Now remember, hypoxia can also be caused by microclotting, so this could be another contributing factor. And hemoglobin is used uh, to carry oxygen in red blood cells. So destruction of that system obviously would be problematic. And apparently vitamin C can protect from that. Vitamin C can protect, protect from that because it is involved in maintaining proper function of hemoglobin and its capacity to carry oxygen. But on top of that, if you release hemoglobin from red blood cells, so you have self-recirculating hemoglobin, that's not a good thing because such hemoglobin is inflammatory as well. So that's not a good thing. And on top of that, it can carry Mm. a type of iron that is not good. It's reactive and it can promote also formation of these reactive oxygen species as well. So that's also not good. And again, that's where vitamin C could come in and help because as we already mentioned, it's both 
antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, so it can negate some of the negative consequences of such cell-free circulating hemoglobin. So I thought that was also interesting. Basically, the author summarized the review that vitamin C should be considered as a form of really easy and cheap treatment at early stages of infection to protect the, protect the people from COVID-19. And they really mention, and this is probably my favorite part of the entire article, is that according to their knowledge and understanding, vitamin C plays, seems to be playing protective role in pretty much every single aspect along the duration of COVID-19 disease progression. So hence, very, very valuable. All right, that's all I have for you, everyone. And I don't think I introduced myself in this video. I normally do. Dr. Mikolai Rashek of Mera Genomics. Hey, if you like this content, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, leave a comment, as well as join our new Patreon account. That's the account where we provide more exclusive content that we would not normally share on YouTube. Still based on science. <laughs> it's just more controversial, I guess. So please check it out. And also check out our uh, COVID-19 Q&A sessions. If you want free tickets to that, subscribe to our newsletter and we'll send you a free ticket. And I look forward to seeing you in another installment. Bye, everyone.